if you please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and we'll be led by Ms. Ayer Harrison. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, you may be seated. Hey, let me say it is truly an honor for me to stand here before you today again, to preside over this momentous occasion. I remember the last time that, uh, the first time that I did this, in fact, I wasn't sure if I could even talk because I had laryngitis when I got to the church. So my wife will remember that. But uh, thankful I'm able to say something today. Uh, we're thankful to Dr. Richmond and the Shady Hill Baptist Church family, our honored guests, members of Shady Hill for letting us have your church today, the host church. And of course, uh, we're thankful for all of us coming together as a community and personians, because now is the day that we come together to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In fact, Dr. King once said, our lives begin to end when we become silent about things that matter. And today, his life and legacy matters, Dr. King. Okay, proceeding on, we will now be led in scripture by Reverend Victor Blackwell. The second line of that song that we just sang has the words about liberty in it. That is one of the themes that Paul wrote about in the letter to the church at Galatia. And although we understand that that liberty has to do with a spiritual sense, there are also principles there, I think, that deal with everyday life for those of us who have liberty in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the early part of that passage of Scripture, Paul reminds us that there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for we're all one in Christ Jesus. And then he defines how a person is to live who has experienced liberty. And I believe that, again, the principles apply not just for the spiritual sense, which he's talking about, but also for the liberty that we treasure in this nation in which we live. And here's how he defines it. He says in verse 13 of the fifth chapter these words, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye are not consumed by one another. This I say, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you ought to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are to walk no longer under the law. And then in the next few verses, he describes what the works of the flesh are. And then in verse 22 and 23, which are two of my favorite verses in this book, he describes how the life of those of us who are led by the Spirit should be living under our freedom in Christ and in this land. He says, but the fruit, notice it is a singular word, but it manifests itself in several different ways. Here's the way Paul describes it. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Those are the things that we receive as an individual from God. When we experience His love, man, we have a peace in our heart that this world cannot take away. We have a joy that we cannot be robbed of. Then he goes on to say long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness. And that's how we relate to one another in this world. Are we gentle? Are we kind to one another? Are we good to one another? 
And then Paul goes on and adds these words. He says, but faith, meekness, and temperance against such there is no law. That's what I am on the inside. A person of faith who remains faithful, meekness, and humble, and also an individual who practices self-control. So he breaks those nine manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit down in three ways. How we relate to God, how we relate to one another, and what I am. He's talking about character, ladies and gentlemen, who we are. And then he says this, And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, or envying one another. Those of us who have freedom that we treasure in this earthly life also have a freedom in Christ Jesus. We've been set by the Spirit of God free. Let us walk in the Spirit, Paul says. All right. For our implication, will be read by Reverend Booker T. Boyd. Shall we pray? Our Father, we heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father God, we invite your Holy Spirit into this service right now. We pray, Lord, that he would just come in and have your way. Lord, we thank you for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday today. As we celebrate, Lord, we pray that we we'll never forget you, forget what Christ did for all of us, who really paid the price that we have the right today to come out and celebrate. And as we celebrate, Lord, we want to keep on uplifting your holy name. Now, Lord, take the service in your hand. Let it be what you have it to be and make up what we should be. And, Lord, to speak like he comes forth, we pray that you would just bless him and just bless us, Lord, from the things that he said. And, Lord, may we go out and tell people the love that you have and share our love with them. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay, now we'll have a welcome address by Ms. Sheila McGee of the Elijah Grove Baptist Church. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good. To our master sermons, Mr. Harvey, Dr. Richmond, Reverend Isaac, good afternoon. On behalf of Shaker Hill Baptist Church, Person County Committee on Affairs of Black Citizens, NAACP, and the Interdenominational Ministry of Alliance, greetings and welcome to everyone in attendance for this annual Dr. Martin Luther King Day observance. It is truly an honor for me to be in the presence of others who have come together to pay tribute to such a wonderful man, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In my opinion, I believe there are two very important facts and lessons for all people to know and learn from Dr. King. That one is obvious. Dr. King was a civil rights leader. This means he was an activist for justice. The lesson to be learned is to work and fight for what you think is right. Do not be afraid to stand up and stand out for your cause. Fact number two regarding Dr. King is that he spent the majority of his life advocating for equality for all. And the lesson learned is there is only one race, which is the human race. My prayer is that this service be spiritual, motivational, and uplifting. Should you need assistance, please see your ushers on the floor. Again, 
welcome to everyone in Tennis. And may God continue to bless you. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. As she said, Dr. King was a civil rights leader, but more, again, more importantly, he was also a man of, of God. And Dr. King once said, the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek. So thank you to the MLK Observance Committee for organizing this event. It takes a lot to put something like this together, especially when it says 16 degrees outside. So again, <laughs> thank you for coming out on this occasion. Okay, now we'll have a solo by Mr. John Burwell, musician in your Grove Baptist Church.
wonderful song. Thank you. Is everybody warmed up? Yeah. Good, good. Oh, oh, the degrees have gone up a little bit? Okay. All right. Okay, now for our greetings. Again, a quote from Dr. King. He quoted, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? At this time, we'll have greetings from our community here in Person County, our leaders, who work in harmony and agreement. First, I have the distinct honor to present our mayor of Roxborough, Marilyn P. Newell. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to be with you today. I seem to always have the first position in bringing greetings, and what a, a wonderful opportunity and honor that is. As I, I will concur with our presiding officer, we all know that an event, a weekend, that encompasses all the events that happen are done with many, many hands, many hearts and hands that come together to make these events happen. And if we are indeed commanded to work and live as unto the Lord, may it always be a labor of love. We know that the benefits that we derive far beyond today carry forward into our community, and your hands and hearts go forward to touch others who may not be in this room today, who may never be in a room like this, but want and need the message that you bring. I would like to recognize uh, our other city council members who are present today, I know Mr. Phillips is on the front row. Would you kindly of stand, Mr. Phillips? Are there any others, any other council members who are present today? I know that Mayor Pro Tem, Tim Chandler, asked me to bring a message to you. He would be here today, except his daughter was playing in a national volleyball tournament this morning in Raleigh. I just learned they did not make it through the quarterfinals, but I know every parent in this room can relate to having to be with your child or desiring to be elsewhere with the community. So we applaud uh, Mayor Pro Tem Chandler that he chose to be with his family today, but we do miss him. I would like to recognize any other City of Roxborough employees who are in the room. If you would please stand. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being with us today. Just know our city staff and all of its departments are always at the ready to be of service to you. While we may call our elected people elected officials, believe me, we truly take the message that it is a public service that we provide and that we always want to be in a servant's heart and servant's mind bringing forward services to you in the city of Roxborough. So it is with greetings and blessings that we welcome you into 2019 in Roxborough and hope you will find your visit or stay or livelihood here to be one that is prosperous and joyful. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Mary Newell. Okay, uh, next we have remarks from the chairman of our county commissioners. Uh, Mr. David Newell is not here, but uh, better yet, Mr. Jimmy Clayton is here to give the remarks. Jimmy? Thank you. Thank you all. Commissioner Newell was at Ruffin Woody's funeral this morning and he asked if he didn't get here if I would fill in for him. And it's always very easy to fill in when you follow him out because he always gives a real good speech. So you all, you, you've got to do is do your greeting and sit down and you've done a good job. <laughs> so I thank her for doing her usual good job. Uh, greetings from Person County, from Person County Governor. Uh, I think you've got the other commissioner that I recognize is here is uh, Ray is going to be speaking later, so I'm going to ask him to stand up and introduce his step. I do want to acknowledge John Merle Munster and Mr. Curtis Bratchett. Those two were commissioners before I got on the board, and they led the way, and I've always tried to get advice from them. Uh, Dr. Harvey does a lot of things, and he's a very quiet, mild person. I just want to thank uh, him for doing lots of things that he's done in the community. Uh, I used to try, if I do this, try to pick out some person that I admire and that has done things for the community. One year it was John Merle Lunsford. I thought he did a lot. Four person county and for the Board of County Commissioners was then was on it. And I didn't know Dr. Harvey until the last probably four or five years. The more I'm around him, uh, 
sometimes he's not tough enough, but he does a really good job, and he, he's a very sincere person. I did just want to put that out there today for all of you that don't know him. Uh, get to know him. And greetings from Person County. If there are any Person County employees or other Person County officials that are, that are here, if you stand up, we'll be glad to recognize you. Thank you. Social Services Director that I see, and if I missed anybody else, wave at me. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jimmy. I, I haven't taken the mail to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we'll hear from uh, Chairman of the Person County Board of Education, Dr. Kay Allen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with you. I bring you greetings from the Person County Board of Education. I am joined today by Mrs. Margaret Bradshaw, would you please stand? Ms. Frieda Tillman, and Ms. Harriet Tiller, members of the board. Thank you. We appreciate your continuing support of our schools and the education of our children. I would like to take just a minute to share a few positive things with you that are happening in our schools that you may not know about. Our graduation rate improved last year. Suspension rates are down. Our student CTE, or Career Technical Education Performance, was ranked number one in the state for the highest number of credentials earned as a percentage of the CTE course enrollment if the course was aligned to one of these credentials. 1,312 students earned 2,902 credentials, which was an increase of 221% over the previous year. So we're very, very proud of that fact. We have hired two behavior specialists this year to focus on social and emotional support for our children. Character education is once again being emphasized in our schools. We have completed the strategic plan and are using that to improve the education of our children over the next few years. Finally, we're also in the process of developing a facilities plan to address the needs of our aging school buildings and to meet the HB90 class size mandates. Do we have any Person County School employees here today? If you would please stand. Thank you. Glad you could be here with us. Our goal is to graduate students who are prepared to pursue their dreams wherever that may lead them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Okay, next, we will have a message from Piedmont Community College President, Dr. Pamela Senecal. Good afternoon. I want to bring greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees at Piedmont Community College and the 7,000 students that we serve throughout Person and Caswell Counties. I also want to um, stand here as a witness because the fact that I have this job is a result of the manifestation of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. I am the manifestation of his dream. The fact that I'm in this position. I've also been doing some reading about, um, about Martin Luther King, and, and I'm struck by the contrast between how he was viewed in 63 at the height of his popularity and then how he was viewed towards the end of his life. And so one of, the, one of the quotes that he said that we don't often hear repeated, and I wrote it down so that I wouldn't mangle it, but it's this one, and it says, I admire the Good Samaritan, but I don't want to be one. I don't want to spend my life picking up people by the side of the road after they've been beaten up and robbed. I want to change the Jericho Road so that everybody has an opportunity for a job, education, security, and health. And so in my greeting today, what I, what I want each of us to be are Jericho Road pavers. We do that at PCC, at Piedmont Community College through education, because once education is given to a person, it is the one thing that can never be taken away. But I am disheartened by the number of people who still do not believe that education is within their grasp. We are working to change that. 
I'm proud of our faculty and staff at PCC and our partnership with the Public Housing Authority where we are beginning to offer classes directly in those communities. I'm even more proud of our faculty and staff who, are, who continue to offer training and skills training at our local prisons so that when those folks who are incarcerated due to any number of circumstances when they transition, they will be able to be productive members of our society. That is the role, that is the power of education. And I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank the commissioners for all of their support for PCC and for education, for our partnership with the public schools. We look forward to doing even more amazing things to transform this community to make sure that everyone has an opportunity for education. Thank you. Let's give our leaders a hand again. And I, I can truly say they do work in harmony. So thank you all for your heartfelt remarks and messages. And now at this time we'll have an offertory prayer by Reverend Timothy Bowles. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, the apostle says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, which includes this offering, do all of the glory of God. I don't think a flimsy offering will bring him any glory. <laughs> My granddad used to say, if you can't be a cheerful giver, then go be stingy alone. <laughs> so I challenge you to, to do all to the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, in your infinite wisdom, you gave us the discipline of tithing, that to our houses of faith, we can give and be reminded and to remind our own hearts that stuff doesn't own me. And then you gave us the blessing of offerings so that when we are so full of joy, we can express it even with the things we own. And then, Father, you give us the principle of investment, that whatever we want to see grow, that's the place we sow. Because your nature is give in everything you have taught us and in all that you have made us, you push us to give. So this offering is a release of control. It is a celebration of life, and it is an investment in community. Now, Father, may we give whatever we have to give for your glory. May we let it go and preach to our heart. May we offer it up and preach to our neighbor. And may we invest it wholeheartedly to preach to those in need. Uh, let our offering be from a sincere and open heart for your glory, for our good, and for the life of the world. Release us now to rejoice as we give. In Jesus we pray, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Okay, now for our offering. Mr. Richard Garland and Bob Trotter will administer the offering this time.
Father in heaven, we come again. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for every hand that gave, every heart that desired, and which did not. We pray, O oh, merciful God, on the next time they will be able to give out of their abundance and not out of their necessity. We ask, O oh, merciful God, that you would just bless it and give it an increase. In all of the prayer we ask it in Jesus' name. Dr. King said, commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. And if you think about it, when we're gone, it's up to our youth to continue that struggle, to ensure that we have equal rights for all. Now, we're going to hear from our youth, who will provide us with special tributes, one to Rosa Parks, and that'll be by Courtney, Ms. Courtney Newman, and next, a tribute to Dr. King by Bryson S. Pondexter. Go, Courtney. Hi, my name is Rosa Parks. You all may know me from the incident that happened in December 1955 when I, was, when I refused to give up my seat to a white man in the government's bus. When after I was arrested, the black community decided to boycott my government's buses by walking to work every day. After for 381 days, we shared rides and took taxi cabs. 381 days, the buses were empty until the Supreme Court finally decided to rule that the changes of the bus be different. And after they were changed, everyone was free to ride the bus and sit wherever they wanted to. Thank you. Bryson is, but he's probably got more nerve than I got. <laughs> 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 but 
My knees would have been shaking, voice quivering at that age. So again, it's up to our youth to continue to struggle, and based on what I saw today, I think we're in good hands. I think we're in excellent hands. If you think about it, uh, when the I Have a Dream speech was given, and the original idea was not to, was to give a speech to the, the crowd of people that were in Washington that day, and someone said from the background, Martin, tell them about the dream. Tell them about the dream. And the preacher came out. And that's the speech that we remember. Now for the introduction of our speaker by presiding elder or elder Clyde Winstead. Good afternoon. I have an easy assignment today is to introduce the speaker for today. And before I introduce the speaker for today, I would like to make mention of prominent people who have labored in our community to make our community better and who have gone on to be with the Lord. You know, you just don't arrive at places. You, you really have stood on somebody else's shoulders to be able to get where you are. You know, a lot of times we don't remember how we arrive at certain junctions. But we need to recognize that somebody labored in order for us to be where we are today. Dr. King did a wonderful job, but I'd like to make mention of uh, Mr. Lindsay Peace. Some of y'all may remember him, and also Mr. Lindsay Blackwell, and also Mr. Hershey Cease. They did a wonderful job in our community. They were drum majors for justice for our community. We certainly take our heads off and commemorate them for the sacrifices that they made to make our community what it is today. Praise God. And at this time, we will introduce and present our speaker for today. A friend of mine has been knowing, knowing him number of years. He's the pastor of my wife's home church in which I visit time and time again. And that is none other than Reverend James Isaac III. He is a native of Durham, North Carolina. He is the son of Mr. James Isaac, Jr. and the late Mrs. Annie B. Isaac. He was licensed to preach the gospel and ordained by the New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church of Durham. Pastor Isaac was educated in the Durham public school system. He was a graduate of the North Carolina A&T University, Greensboro, North Carolina, with a BS degree in computer science. Reverend Isaac had furthered his study of Southeastern Theological Seminary and Shaw University Divinity School. He is a former member of the Board of Directors of the National Christian Student Leadership Consultation and the Association of Christian Study Leaders. He serves as the second vice moderator and executive board member of the Wake Missionary Baptist Association. He served on the Board of Directors of Methodist Daycare Center Incorporated. Reverend Isaac served as a member of the Ministerial Council of the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina and the Special Assistant to the National Director of the National Baptist Study Student Union. He served as first vice moderator of the East Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Association. Currently, Reverend Isaac serves as the moderator 
and executive board member of the East Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Association. He is the former pastor of the First Baptist Church, Chicopee, North Carolina, and the Oblin Baptist Church, Raleigh, North Carolina. Pastor Geiser was called to pastor the New Hope Brandville Missionary Baptist Church, Oxford, North Carolina, in May 2000. He is married to Cheryl Blunt Isaac. They are the proud parents of three children, Jasmine, James IV, and Jessica, and proud grandparents of Jaden and Kenny. We pray that you would not sit in judgmental, but sit prayerfully as the man of God come and declare the word which the Lord has placed in his heart to do so on today. And as we say, don't sit in your tent doors to judge. <coughs> Amen. But sit prayerfully as he comes and present what the Lord has placed in his heart to do so. Are you going to do that for us? Are you going to pray with him? Amen. Are you going to pray for him? Amen. Amen. I believe we have a, another song of Mr. John Bewell. And after which we will have none other than our speaker for today. God bless you. Amen.
words with my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Praise, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Well, let's try that one more time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, that's better. That's better. What a wonderful day to be here and to be part of such a grand celebration to a wonderful servant of the Lord who based his dream on that wonderful, beloved community of the kingdom of God. Everyone is the same in the sight of God. I'm grateful for the invitation uh, to come and share in this event uh, from the Person County Committee on the Affairs of Black Citizens, the Person County Ministerial Alliance, the Person County Branch of the NAACP, as well as the MLK Observance Committee. Also, let me thank our host pastor, Reverend Dr. Richmond and the Shady Hill Congregation for their hospitality as well. Uh, if you'll pray for me, this is my second today and fifth in two days. And so if you'll pray that the Lord will hold my voice up, we hopefully we'll have a celebration. I do would like, I would like to acknowledge the presence of my wife, who's here along with our grandson, uh, Jaden. Cheryl Isaac, who stand here. Now, um, when Brother Bradshaw contacted me for this uh, occasion, he wanted me to speak. And I must admit that you to ask a preacher, <laughs> a Baptist preacher, to speak, you are in danger. Uh, but I will do what I've been asked to do. Uh, my reference is the scriptures. And so I will share with you from the Gospel of Mark, 16th chapter of that Gospel, first verse from the English Standard Version, the Greek New Testament, these words, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Solomon bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Talk from that text and from the subject, don't let the stone stop you. Don't let the stone stop you. Forward together, don't let the stone stop you. Life has a way of putting us in positions that make overcoming obstacles difficult. We find ourselves spending more time really concentrating on our past failures and our past setbacks rather than focusing on future victories and future triumphs. We exert too much of our time and our energy lamenting about the barriers that stand in our way rather than concentrating on finding ways to go around them and discovering ways to overcome them. Too many people live in the days of yesteryear and in the days of if only. We would rather live in the past than live with the past. But if we continue living in the past, we will never reach where we are headed and we will never get to where we're supposed to be. Some people never grow up and accept full responsibility for their actions because they have yet to leave the past and live in the present. 
Certain problems keep recurring in our lives because we can't let go of past failures and past defeats. There are many people living a life that's full of grudges and hatred, unwilling to forgive because their past is still their present. Some people continue to make the same mistakes, unable to move forward because they're too busy looking back. Many people are afraid to face the future, really, because of a fear of failure. But don't be afraid of failure. This life is full of failure. <laughs> All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's failure. Consider your ways. You have sown much, but you've brought in little. That's failure. Inasmuch as you did it not to the least of these, that's failure. When I was sick, you didn't visit me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in prison, you didn't check on me. That's failure. We're human and we're prone to fail, but don't let that discourage you. Most of the inventions and discoveries that we have are here today because some brave people were not afraid to fail. Now, people will tell you that your dream is impossible and your goal is unreachable, but you keep moving. For in the days of Orville and Wilbur Wright, it was proven by scientists beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was impossible for anyone to fly, but time has proven them wrong. And today we're flying off the wings of American and Delta, Southwest and U.S. Air. Loud was the laughter of the science world when Bell proposed to use ordinary telegraph wire to transmit the human voice. But today everybody has one of those things that's controlled by Verizon. AT&T, Sprint and Cricket. And so it was in the days of Jesus. It was proven that it was impossible for anyone to return from the grave. For when a person was dead, they were dead. The heart, the lungs, the liver, and all of the other vital organs, they were dead. But no sooner than it was proven that a resurrection took place. Thank God for the resurrection. The resurrection is the power on which the believer can reach the unreachable, fight the unbeatable, and bear the unbearable. That's why the Apostle Paul declared, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Thank God for the resurrection. For without the resurrection, our faith and my preaching would be in vain. Without the resurrection, there would be no reason to sing, no power to live. Without the resurrection, there would be no victory over death, no triumph over temptation, and no hope against the grave. The resurrection is what distinguishes Christianity from all other religions and philosophies of the world. Men and women of great religious acumen and philosophical insight have crossed the stage of human events, but now they rest beneath the soil. But I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. An empty grave is there to prove that my Savior lives. How do you know he lives? Glad you asked. Well, he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we too have the assurance that one day we shall also rise again. But there was a large stone that almost prevented the good news from ever coming out. Three women were on their way to the tomb of their fallen Lord to pay their last respects. It had been a very difficult time for them. Their faith had been shattered. Their hope had been destroyed. Their Lord had been crucified. 
They had witnessed firsthand the harsh and inhumane treatment of Jesus, the hostility of the crowd, the injustice of the legal system, the cold-heartedness of the Roman soldiers. They experienced the contempt of one of the thieves that hung alongside of him. They watched Jesus as he hung on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. They heard the voices that cried out in jest, if thou be the son of God come down from the cross. They sat there with tears in their eyes as he cried out, Tetelestai, it is finished. They were there, I tell you, when the earth started reeling and rocking with convulsions and the sun hid its face in disgust. They saw one of the soldiers take a spear and pierce his side and blood and water came streaming down. They saw Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus take his body down from the cross and place it in Joseph's tomb. They watched as the two men rolled the stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and they decided to give him a proper burial at the right time after the Sabbath. They would return. So early on the first day of the week before the sun had a chance to rise. As they started out on their journey, they kept raising the question amongst themselves over and over and over again, who shall roll us away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? As we celebrate the resurrection, as we remember Dr. King, let's not forget that large stone that stood in the way. First of all, look at these women as they commence their journey. Notice they never let their situation undermine their determination. They were determined to give Jesus a proper burial. They were aware of the fact that they needed some assistance. They realized what they could do, but they also realized what they could not do. You see, they had enough spices to anoint the body. They had enough courage to do the job. They had enough love to remove all fear. But what they did not have was enough strength to move that great big stone. And what Dr. King wanted all of us to understand that we do not live in isolation. That we ought to live in community. That we need one another. I need you, and you need me. All of us need to realize that we're going to need some help at some point in our lives. None of us can boast that we are totally self-sufficient. God is the only one who is self-existent. He's the only one who can declare, I am that I am. We need help. You, you and I didn't get to where we are on our own. And even if you thought you made it by yourself, I've got news for you. God had his hand in it. For what I have, the Lord gave me. What I know, the Lord taught me. Where I am, the Lord brought me. And where I'm going, the Lord will have to take me. We can't make it in this world by ourselves. We need the help of others. These women realized that they needed help in moving that great big stone. There was a stone that stood in their way, and there are stones that stand in our way. Stones that try to keep us locked in a tomb. Stones that try to seal us from the outside world. Stones that try to restrict our forward movement. Stones that try to suffocate us from the fresh air of hope. Stones that try to halt the progress of God's program. These stones that try to stop God's advancement of his kingdom. And these stones seem to be saying to us, stay in the tomb. Stay in the tomb so that evil can have its way. Stay in the tomb and let Satan devour and destroy lives without opposition. Stay in the tomb. Keep the gospel silent. Stay in the tomb. Keep the church impotent. Stay in the tomb. Keep communities in chaos. Stay in the tomb. 
Let hate be a body. Stay in the tomb. Keep the power of God out of this world. You're great stones that stand in our way. What are these stones? Well, one of the stones that we face that we still have to deal with in this country is the stone of racism. We don't like to talk about it in America, but it's true. We have to have an honest conversation that God has made all nations, all people, from the same blood. And that what affects one affects all. We, 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 have to, we, have to, we have to deal with the consequences of that racism where there is inequality that affects those who cannot speak for themselves. We've got to be like Moses. When we see a good fight, we ought to get in it. When there is injustice, we ought not to stand back and let injustice go on. But we have to let the God in us rise up in us, no matter who it is that we stand for rights. That's a stone that needs to move. These women face the stone, and you and I face stones. But there was another barrier, another obstacle that stood in their way. They existed the problem behind the problem that they knew nothing about. You see, the Pharisees and the chief priest had gone to Pilate and requested that the tomb be sealed for fear that his disciples would come by night, steal the body, and claim that he got up from the grave. And there are certain circumstances and situations that we face are more complex than what meets the eye. There exists the problem behind the problem that we don't see and that we don't know anything about. We face a problem of children not learning in school. That's a problem. But the problem behind the problem, many times we do not know the homes from which the children come that makes learning in school difficult. We do not take time enough to investigate and invest in the lives of those that we're training. Then we cannot make things better. We face the problem of divided religious communities and unfulfilled ministries. That's a problem. But the problem behind the problem is that there's a whole lot of folk who are religious and not enough folk who've been born again. <laughs> God's grace shields us from seeing too much so that we won't lose faith and give up. Our four parents used to put it this way, he keeps me from danger seen and unseen. And some things we really don't need to know anyway. Look at these women, their hearts were heavy, their spirits were low, their souls were burdened, their peace had parted. And one question that we must ask is, what kept these women still moving? And they knew that there was a great stone that stood in their way. And they knew that they did not possess enough strength to move that stone. What kept them going? The text doesn't say. We don't know. But it does raise a question for us in 2019. Will we let our stone stop us? Will we give up on life? Will we resign from the struggle? Will we quit the race? Will we throw in the towel? Or will we keep moving like these three women? The good news of the text is that when they looked up, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. And until you look up, 
you will never see what God has already done. Until you look up, you will never know that the battle is the Lord's and the victory is yours. The psalmist proclaims, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. But notice, if you will, that the stone was not moved to get Jesus out of that tomb. But the stone was moved so that you and I could step in like Peter and see that he is not dead, that he's very much alive. There are some stones that God will not move. There are some problems that God will not solve. There are some barriers that God will not break. There are some sicknesses that God will not heal in this life. But God doesn't have to move your stone to bless you. Because we serve a God that can move through stone, step over obstacles, break through barriers, slide through rocks, and walk through walls. So let your enemies plot and scheme. Let your foes fuss and fight. Let evil have its way and let the devil have his day. God will bless you anyhow. God will lift you up anyhow. God will elevate you anyhow. I'm glad that Calvary was not the end of the story. For if the book had been closed at Calvary, it would have been half the story. You see, Noah died, and that was the end of his story. Abraham died, and that was the end of his story. Moses died, and that was the end of his story. Samuel died, and that was the end of his story. David died, and that was the end of his story. Esther died, and that was the end of her story. Elijah died. And that was the end of his story. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, and Paul all died. And that was the end of their story. If Jesus had just died, he would have been a noble martyr. He would have been a profound teacher. He would have been an amazing healer. And he would have been a great legend. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all people to be most pitied. Yes, he died till the earth shook. He died till the sun hid. He died till the moon turned red like blood. He died till angels hid their faces. He died till graves opened up. He died till the dead marched around. He died till redemption was complete. Salvation was secured. Sin was covered and fellowship was restored. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that early Sunday morning, God Got him up with all power, all power in his hand. And at the same time, God dispatched two angels to go down from glory, fly by the Milky Way, circle the universe, zoom past the stars, soar past the sun, sweep through the ionosphere, swing through the stratosphere, glide through the hemisphere, break through the atmosphere, 
go down to Palestine, circle Gethsemane, fly by Joseph's tomb, and speed past the stone. He gave them orders to wait at the tomb until three women arrived. He told them the, this message to give to the women, to let them know that everything will be all right. God will dispatch angels to meet you at your stone, to let you know that everything, everything, everything will be all right. Don't let the stone stop you like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I've done to make this waste so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, take courage because the Lord the Lord, the Lord will, will make a way somehow. Don't let your stone stand in the way. Let's give Reverend Isaac a hand again. What a message. What a message. Don't let your stone stand in the way. For a minute there, I was thinking, is Dr. Martin Luther King here somewhere? What a message. All right, this has truly been a great day today. And we have some acknowledgments and recognitions to start next. At this time, we'll have the Vice Chair of the Person County Board of Commissioners, Vice Chair Ray Jeffers. First, give an honor to God, Reverend Richmond, Reverend Isaac. And speak today to all of you good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have a distinct honor to recognize several people here today. Senator Mike Woodard, North Carolina State Senate. <laughs> You've already heard from some members, but we'll recognize them again. Uh, Commissioner Jimmy Clayton. The city of Roxburgh, Mar Marilyn Newell. <laughs> Councilman Mark Phillips. From our school board, your chair, Dr. Kay Allen. <laughs> Vice Chair Frida Tillman. <laughs> Margaret Bratcher. <laughs> Harriet Tilly. PCC, you've also heard from Dr. Pamela Senegal. And I also want to take the time to recognize Carlton Paler. He would stand and remain standing. Carlton and I have the honor of chairing our DSS board. Carlton does a great job for us here in this county. Carlton is our only black department head in the county. Carlton is in charge of one of the largest departments that we have in the county. $55 million of federal funds, $21 million of state, and $4 million of county funds flow through his department through programs of some sort. And so you know what impact that has on this county. And we just want to thank him for the job he does for the county. I also want to take this time, since they gave me a mic, someone once always told me, said you always recognize the ones who show as you stand. In 1972, Person County elected Curtis Bratcher, County Commissioner. He served 16 years. Mr. Lunsford also served 16 years, 10 consecutive, as the chairman of the Person County Board of County Commissioners. And 
someone told me, said, when you recognize the ones you, that you stand on their shoulders, it doesn't mean you're supposed to sit. You're supposed to keep it going, keep it moving. And so only through their advice, through their uh, mentor, being a mentor, I was able to do some things that other commissioners, black or white, in this county had been able to do. One was serve as the youngest president of North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. I was born in 29. Now, I'm not 29 or 145 pounds anymore. But through their mentorship and also Jimmy Clayton, I probably called Jimmy so much his wife thinks she ought to set another place at the table. But through their leadership, I've tried to keep Person County at the table not take the stance that we're just a small rural county and that we're going to get what we get, but learn what's coming down the pipeline. Learn how we can be at the table. Now, we all stand on the shoulders of Dr. King, black or white, but we're not supposed to just sit. We're supposed to do more. And so I invite you this year to come out to a county commission meeting. Get involved on some of our boards and, and uh, you know, Call of service, being called a serve is not always easy, but we need people uh, to serve. We have issues here in Person County that uh, I know it's hard to believe that we're not as great as we will think that we are sometimes. But we have an opioid problem here in this county. A lot of those children that cause from serving up there are a direct impact of the drug use in this county. From the kids that we have in foster care that we don't have enough foster homes for. For the people who can't get jobs in some of these companies that are hiring because they can't pass the drug tests. But there's ways the county can invest back those tax dollars that you pay into the community and into you all. If you don't know anyone in your family or friends that have been impacted by drug use, you ought to be right down here at the altar right now, thanking God for it. Amen. Second thing I want to work on this year for us to invest in is food security here in Person County. If you rode by one of our food banks on Thanksgiving, the line was so long, black and white, old and young, of people with serious need in this county. And so I want to work with the board this year on figuring out ways that we can partner with churches or other organizations, nonprofits that are trying to tackle this issue. Uh, it's not just adults. If you have hunger adults, you have hunger children. And we already know that. We already have a kind of back power program, backpack power program going on in the county. Uh, but we have things to work on here in Person County. Dr. King has afforded those, op those opportunities to give back and to work on them, so let's not sit and let's get to work on them. Thank you. One more. Thanks, Senator Waters. Our District Attorney, Mike Waters. Please, please stand. You all know we are in the new judicial district now in Person County, and this is our DA. Thank you, Ray, for that inspiring message and his work to move the stones in Person County. Um, I, I did see uh, Commissioner Newell sneak in in the back, so I'm just going to recognize him. If you'll stand. Okay, next, um, I have on my list here Mr. Avi Lester, but, oh, there he is. Oh, oh, oh Bob's going to stand in, okay. Um, I can only assume that, well, I went to a, a program last night and Avi was singing, and he talked as well, so it, who knows, he may have gotten laryngitis. You know, but anyway, standing in for Avi is Mr. Bob Trotter, NACP. I'm about a foot shorter and about six years older. <laughs> but our president uh, called me this morning. He has come down again with this, whatever you call it, this virus of unknown origin that has affected everybody. And I tell those who haven't had it, please give me your, please give me your, your prescription so I won't get it too. Uh, we've heard from our speakers today the recognition of Dr. King and his contribution and I, I like the theme on which our major speaker spoke about. Don't let the stone stop us. I'm not going to go any further than that. 
other than to be reminded of the song, the Negro Next Manhattan talked about the road is hard, and the Henry Jackson song about how we got over. And Dr. King's last speech was, I've gone to the mountaintop, and I've seen it. The next day, of course, he was killed. And don't you think that uh, Dr. King got to the mountaintop on flat roads? The speaker has reminded all of us there's still difficulty out there. We have to pull together, we have to work together, and to make sure that we will certainly pre persevere and achieve Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. Those of you who are sitting here in this beautiful room today would not be here had it not been jobs open enough for people to have money so they can invest in their, in their communities, in their churches, and in their education. I'm a product of Dr. King's effort in terms of education. Had it not been for somebody making the way for me, I would not be here today. And we as the now generation have an opportunity and an obligation to do all we can to make this world a better place. And again, please, don't let the stone step in your way. And on behalf of, Dr. of our president, everybody else would love to be here. I want to thank all of you for all of your presence, your continued support, and by all means, uh, in a way that we can be helpful to you as an organization, we will. And thank you again for having come. Thank you, Bob. Okay, next, we have um, Mr. Curtis Bratcher, and I'm going to brag on him a little bit. Uh, he's, he's president of the County Affairs of Black Citizens, but he's, he's done a lot for Person County. Uh, you might see his name on a building or two around town somewhere, but uh, I'm really proud to know him and, and to be able to introduce him. So with that said, Mr. Curtis Bratcher, president of Person County Affairs of Black Citizens. I'm getting to the last page of my script. <laughs> okay, truly, we thank you all for your presence here today and, and joining us in this historic occasion to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And, you know, I've, I've read some quotes. But here was one quote that really stuck in my mind, and, and Dr. King said, he said, the time is always right to do what is right. So let that be our mantra or slogan going forward in 2019. And as Reverend Isaac said, don't let a stone uh, stand in your way. Find a way to get around that stone. And of course, ask for help from the man above. So with that said, uh, we come to our end. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Was, it, was it worth coming out in 16, 20 degrees weather?
Yeah, I think so. I hope we're all warm with, in spirit and love. So with that said, will you please stand for our closing selection, We Shall Overcome.
Thank you. 